I think Child has literally released the Kraken. Also, I think it might be time for an epic boss time. I might be exhausted. If we hadn't happened to see the gay chamber flying over just as we came out of the Golden House, we'd really wouldn't have known which way to go. Obvious statement is obvious. People fighting against that which is beyond our capacity and any given limit. No, for whatever reason, anime logic. The anime protagonist seems to have more than enough power to stop whatever it is on his or herself because anime logic. <laughs> No. You could have said no. What? Also, Paimon is surprised again. I don't know why. Actually, it's just... Screw it. Do you have an idea? Are you going to use that thing? And who is it? Talk about yourself. You made the British duck. So be it. We shall use the upgraded wage on Ballista to fight off that god. We okay. have a moment to spare. Our battle begins now. Okay. Let's go. Oh, I don't know if that's the one I want. We gotta use the Ballista to get that thing out.
last man. Very hard.
themselves fully. Okay. You seriously did a hyper beam right at the end? Oh, you couldn't have done that sooner? Oh no, it had to be at a certain point. It's working! We just need to keep this up! I thought we already did it. Oh, they're gonna try something else. They're gonna try their hyper beam. Ooh. Raining everywhere, hard as hell. Oh. character can glide. Why bother with falling? Be careful now. The Guishan Ballista is destroyed. Without its covering fire, retaliation shall be difficult. But the Jade Chamber is our last line of defense. We can't give another inch, no matter what. Yeah, because we'll take a foot. I have another idea. <laughs> What do you mean, Lady Ningguang? We have no other option. But I'll wait, I have one more thing. Chamber. You're gonna sacrifice the Jade Chamber. Of this? I understand. Traveler, lend me a hand. I am an old friend. You're gonna give up the one thing that's important to you. Let us meet again in the Everybody survived at the same time. Just like that. Yeah, sacrifice the Jay Chamber to fight off the Kraken. Is basically what happened. Yeah, dang. We died it. Yes! The ominous aura of that monster has indeed begun to fade. The effects of the Sigil of Permission last but a short time. It will be some time before the Overlord of the Vortex can make any waves again. And how do we fight it again if we don't have a frickin' Jade Chamber or Ballista? We are indebted to you for your assistance. If the Adepti hadn't happened to be here, the future of Leo Harbor would surely have been in great jeopardy. Pretty much. Save your flattery. We didn't just happen to be here. Surely you won't pretend to have forgotten the reason for which we came. Uh, because it's a contract and you're so indebted to everybody, you have, like, some personal role in it. Um, now, there's no need for such harsh words, Cloud Retainer. I've heard that when Ning Wang began learning to do business, she had already started setting aside part of her then limited income in preparation for building the Jade Chamber. So she is somehow new? At first. It was only the size of a small room, but with continued expansion it has become the palace that lies before you. It is a testament to Ning Wong's entire life, both as a businesswoman and as the backbone of the Liyue Qixing. Seeing the Jade Chamber destroyed in the defense of Liyue means much to her. To me, such cooperation and sacrifice deserves at least some recognition, don't you agree? Mm. Well... I was really hoping you would say that such sacrifice could at least be used as some leverage in our negotiations. <laughs> Thank you all for hearing me out. We know very well why the Adepti came here today. But please forgive us. We cannot yield to your wishes. Oh. 3,700 years. According to our records, the Adepti signed a contract with Rex Lapis to protect Lyra 3,700 years ago. Even to this very day, Liyue and its lands have stood the test of time, immovable as stone, just as it was thousands of years before. This is truly no small feat. Just like China. 
Except China probably lasted way more than that. But that does not mean that the Lira of today is the same city as it was all those years ago. Things change. Move on. That's basically what you're saying. Do not merely cast your protective gaze upon the land. Instead, focus your sights on our city and each of the citizens that dwell within it. Are you questioning our means of protecting the Lira? Hmm. I mean no offense. I simply hope that our Adepti forebears would see Liyue in a new light. <laughs> forebears, you say? One doubts you would be fit to be part of such a lineage. This morning, Rex Lapis appeared to me in a dream. What? In the dream, I yearned to tell him that we Chi Sing, though mortal, are equally bound to the contract. Each passing generation of the Chi Sing leaves many things of value to be inherited by the next generation. Mm -hmm. I also thought to tell him how the past generations of Chi Sing had strove under his rule to survive in our mortal world, establishing a network of contracts which has since come to be known as Strain. But I dared not speak. I could only gaze at him in silence until the moment I awoke. Yet another perspective. What are you trying to Why say? Why there's a scrub between the Guardians and the Man to Fen? Harmony becomes very difficult to dis to restore. Right! That's something that happened in Monster. It's a story about the four winds and the people of the Animal Archon. The Animal Archon sought to quell the strife between the two sides because he believed that such conflict would only scar the hearts of both. This is what we learned in the city of Pre. Each of the seven nations has its own scars from the past. Though your point is the very height of simplicity, as Adepti, we've become a laughing stock to be chastised thus by an outlander who has lent us such sucker. Uh, all right, all right. Didn't Ming Wong suggest that we should focus on the city and each of its citizens? I apologize for appearing in full armor. I am afraid I cannot show the proper currencies. And who are you? I am Feng Yan, a sergeant of the Milith. I have come to extend my thanks to the Adepti. I thought this battle would perhaps be my last. But thanks to the aid of the Adepti, our forces were not as badly battered as I feared we might be. Although I am a mere mortal soldier, I promise to hold the line and never betray the grace given to us by the illuminated Adepti. <laughs> The whole idea is that these guys can't think for themselves and it's hard for them to change. <laughs> Weren't you frightened, dear? It was quite the predicament. I wasn't afraid. All those strong Nolan guards were there. And those powerful heroes with their visions were there. Everyone was there. How the hell would you know? We didn't see you. When danger is near, everyone always protects me. And the rest of the time, they make fun toys and tasty sticks. Harbor. Please come visit us for the next lantern ride. Unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to participate. Huh? They have disagreements between each other. Because we are a dead type. Oh, okay. Oh. You see, this is what Lyra is like today. The country of contracts is grateful to the adept eye for their protection. But it is no longer necessary for the city to rely on the Adepti's power to solve every little niggly matter, although their blood is weak. There is still strength to be found in those we call mortals. The time of contact between gods and Lyra has long since passed. Now is the time of contracts between Lyra and its people. Hmm. Seeing the port around us now, it is hard not to feel a bit of a place. Wouldn't you say so, Cloud Retainer? Your line of inquiry is askew. One did not spearhead this expedition to you at Harbor. Hmm. Seems like the Adepti have had a huge They're trying to understand things from their perspective, not their own. That's the whole point. Eager to leave, conqueror of demons. <laughs> Yes, one understands what the Conqueror of Demons means. The city of Lyra has changed much after our long separation. 
Pretty much. One fears that by the time one finally grasps the new contracts will be fair enough for you. Away we shall, and return whence we came. Okay. Hmm. How the hell can you carve the moon? Since we adept I have consensus, then one shall persist no further. Okay. But how will we ensure that the Liyue Chising will not simply exploit their power once we depart? In my view, that is still a thing to be guarded against. He has a point. It's like, we're a symbol of power, and it's like, if every other symbol of power and one other symbol of power is left, how can that not try to overthrow everything else? <laughs> All right, Moon Carver, you needn't worry. It seems to me that this right of supervision is best left to the people of Liyue. <gasps> Looks like the conflict between humans and their big guy was avoided. Uh, the adept eye requires it only in the end. Also, obvious, same as obvious! faked his death to try to get the uh the gnosis or whatever the hell it is and the say bye or why or i don't know Great lady. is there anything i can do for you too i'm afraid that long shan funeral parlor isn't in the best state to receive guests why damn yeah, where did i put my oh there's my water bowl until we're here. Unfortunately, Jean Lee isn't here at the moment. It seems he went to Northland Bank. Either let me into the funeral place or I will arrange your funeral. Doesn't the Northland Bank belong to the Fatui? Hmm. Do I have to arrange the Fatui's funeral now? Last time we saw Jean Lee was before we went to the Golden House. He went to the Golden House. Do you Uh, or maybe he's on a diplomatic mission. Maybe you just don't know. We had better go and make sure that everything is okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, you're so concerned. Also, white cat in the background for no apparent reason. If it was Inuzima, I'm like, what, is that Dogland? Cause... You call this cooperation between Harbingers. Cooperation involves communication, you know. <laughs> Don't take it to heart, child. Besides, <laughs> are you happy that you got to skip the formalities and bring chaos to the land? I'm sure you must have enjoyed that. Don't take it to heart, you little child. Oh, God. I, it almost sounded condescending for a second, just because of his name. Oh, it seems that some of your friends have arrived. Oh, it seemed like you tried to freeze my freeze my friend's legs and beat me down. Obvious statement is obvious. Also, Signora! <laughs> you! It's you two. I believe we've met once before. In the city of Bards, was it? I'm glad you still remember my name. Uh huh. Ah, right. Just stay calm. I imagine that still it must have, have been rather take... hard to forget watching helplessly. As well, if it isn't you two, <laughs> this is our first time seeing each other since Liyue was nearly wiped off the map. This is certainly a bit awkward, wouldn't you say? Why are you here? Why is Signor here? Why anything? Why is Zhang Li there? Which almost made me think that Zhang Li is almost part of it, but then again, maybe they're both part of it. Hmm. I knew that we should never have trusted a Fatui Harbinger. Oh, now don't say that. Sure, I may have misled you, but I never had anything against you personally. Yeah, nothing personal. It was all business. Archetype. Besides, I thought we were getting along quite well together, didn't you? Except for that little tussle we had at the end. <laughs> Except for the part of me having to possibly ask you for money because Zhang Li doesn't know how to handle his own money and rely on other people's money for progressing in a quest. Yeah, that part. Nothing personal. We just <laughs> have views, that's all. 
Of course, you may very well hold this against me, but that's up to you. It, it's almost like somebody somebody admitting they have a different political view and then like, we're not against each other, even though we are politically opposed to each other. The real deceivers here are Senor and Zhang Li. Curse them for leading me on. So actually, I think... Wow. Stop wasting time, child. There'll be plenty of time to chat once I'm through here. Uh-huh, are you gonna cleave me in two? You remember the agreement, Morax. Now, if you would be so kind. Agreement? The Gnosis, please. Oh, wait, child was acting on behalf of Signora just to look for the Gnosis. What in the world are you talking about? The contract is fulfilled. That which thou seeketh is now bestowed unto thee. So he had the Gnosis the whole time. The Geo Archon Gnosis. Ah, uh, wah. <sighs> sanctimonious. Zongli is actually Rex Lactus. Oh my god, what a twist. You were the so he wasn't killed? Oh my god. No, it's like, there's some part of me that's not even surprised. Like, I, I feel that Dragon, like, was a uh, fucking decoy. Also, what exactly is the Gnosis? Like, what? Basically, like. Uh huh. I'm pretty sure I'll find out at some point. I do not give it for free. I give it as agreed upon in the contract. Then why did you fade your death? Yeah, you don't think you went a little bit too far with that whole fake death thing? <laughs> Gathering all the forces that have been bubbling behind the scenes, and then stirring them together in a pot that was bound to boil over. That's what he wanted to see, am I right? Who's he? Wait, what? Perhaps it's best that I explain. As you know, I've dwelt upon this world for more than 6,000 years. It is now 3,700 years ago that I founded Leo together with the Adepti. Mm. Even boulders that can withstand whirlpools will erode with the passing of time. I kept convincing myself that cracks had not begun to form, and that the end of my time had not yet come until one drizzly day. As I was strolling along the harbor, I heard a merchant tell one of his workers, You finished your duties. Go ahead and call it a day. I stood motionless among the crowds, asking myself, Have I already finished my duties? Mm, because you had a moment to reflect on yourself, like, Am I that tired after 3,700? Anybody could get tired at that point. Like, the fact that Zhang Li could actually live that long. But then again, I did have some idea that he had some history, just by one of the cutscenes. But I never thought he would be, like, Rex Lapis. But as I began to consider relinquishing my divine role, I soon discovered that many reasons still remained to not hastily depart. I was like, maybe it wasn't a good idea after all. Was Liyue, the city I had dwelt in for so long, already prepared to enter its next age? I decided that a test was needed in order to reveal the answer. So you thought, oh gee, what happens if you're not around? Would somebody else be able to take over and protect everybody in your stead? So I feigned my own death and gathered the cast of Child, the Adepti, and the Liyue Chising to play their roles together on the stage that was Liyue. You're satisfied? Indeed I was. The Gnosis, which I had kept for so many years, suddenly seemed to have lost its meaning. What else do you expect when you persist for over 3,700 years? I'm pretty sure almost any type of meaning would lose. You'd lose over time. That's right. <clears throat> Which is why I continue to safeguard the Gnosis until now. So you mean that if the Chaos ever reached the point of no return, you would simply appear and use your divine powers to bring Lila back under control? Of course. And it would have been all too easy for him, too. Uh, 
Wow. Just as a child quickly matures after losing their parents, so has Leo matured when faced with the death of its deity. In the end, the resolution to all that has transpired was even more satisfactory than I could have hoped for. Because you wanted to know if someone could take care of the problem while you were not there. Or at least that's what I'm getting from it. Take the Adepti, for instance. Owing to their years of seclusion, they were the least informed. Yet when faced with a crisis, they commendably showed the greatest amount of restraint possible. Not only did they manage to cooperate with the Chising, but in the end, they even made efforts to understand the hearts of the people. Gee, I wonder who did that if you were not around. <laughs> Credit is also due to Signora, the emissary dispatched by the Cryo Archon to fulfill our contract. At my request, she kept everything she knew in strict confidence. This despite the eavesdropping ears of her colleague, Child. Oh, this cool. meant I could remain as Zhongli, even having the chance to fulfill the age-old traditions of Liu in this mortal form. Thank you for joining me on this journey, Traveler. Ah, so he literally got sick and tired of fulfilling a divine role. It's like when you live past the 3,000 year point, things do kind of get old. And you're like, I want to die, says Zhongli. All of these things turned out as I had planned. There is only one thing that I had not anticipated, and that was the conduct of the Liu Chising. Uh -huh. I had expected them to do no more than the Adepti, to come to the defense of Liyue. But when all was said and done, they did come in. They seized the opportunity to supplant Liyue's divine protectors, and used the subsequent power vacuum left by my death to quickly gain complete control of Liyue. What do you expect? When there's a freaking death of a god, there's a power vacuum, and someone is going to fill it right away. Huh? That doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> On the contrary, I think it is excellent. I had always feared that it was too soon for them to take over from me. And it was also that which I longed for the most. As such, this is the best parting gift anyone could have given this god of old. Hey, what about me? Doesn't anyone feel the least bit of remorse for deceiving me? You practically kept me in the dark. Mm, maybe for good measure, but you know what? Concerning the fact that you tried to, like, take the Gnosis for yourself, I'm pretty sure there was a reason they kept you in the dark. <laughs> I think that thanks would be more appropriate. You certainly played no small part in all of this. Wreaking havoc and turning the city upside down. The Lord of Geo ought to thank you for your performance, if anything. If you hadn't created the pressure of the battle between mortals, a death die, and a god, the lump of coal resting in the hands of the Geo Archon, Liu would never have been able to become a dazzling diamond of a city. Uh, uh. Huh? Just whose side are you on, mocking me like that? We're both easily are you fooled. For a fight? Be that as it may, you've come out of this as the hero of Liu. I, on the other hand, will be forever prescribed as a disturber of the peace, no? Uh-huh. <laughs> well then, with the Gnosis in my possession, I have no use for such idle chatter. We should return to Zapoliarni Palace and seek an audience with Her Majesty, the Tsaritsa. Come, child. Ah, fine. I'll meet you then later. I'm not... <laughs> Do as you wish. One of these days, we're gonna meet the Fatui and figure out what they're going to do with the Gnosis. you have any idea what they're doing, Patrick? Now then. Wait, what did you say? Anything else you wish to ask me? Wait, is it... Oh, God. What'd you say? The Fatui. Is that available in the game, or is that still not added? Fatui? Yeah. Like, what about them? Uh, like, there... How many areas are even in the game so far? The Fatui, no, they're the antagonists. They're one of the antagonists. The like, that's what their group is called. Well, I'd like to know what the Cryer Archon offer you. Mortality! That's, that's probably it. Right! As Yonki always told us, a good trade is a fair trade. Realistically speaking, there is no such thing. Because fairness is such a mortal thing. It's beneath a god, but somehow you want to not be a god. 
However, I am the god of contracts. For thousands of years, I have made countless contracts. <laughs> if the deal was of no benefit, then I certainly would not be inclined to agree to it. It was a benefit in that it... To others, it was not seen a benefit. Mortality. My agreement with the Cryo Archon will be the last of my contracts as the Geo Archon. My contract to end all contracts. Yeah, he wants mortality. To not live as a god. As for the bargaining chip that the Tsaritsa used to balance the scales, uncover that answer for yourself in your future journeys. I'm not gonna answer the question. You are. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna leave it up to the player. Uh, the contracts to end all contracts. That's like he's not gonna do contracts anymore, so that's sort of like a, a theme of finality right at the end of his career. He's not gonna do his career anymore. After the dust settles, I couldn't read it because the text was too damn fast. The rat is perfect. Oh god, we gotta go to a fake funeral. Where we originally came to watch the dragon fall from the sky. Look, it's me, Wong, and Kuching. Are they saying something? Are their speeches over? As said previously, Rex Lapis's soul returning to the heavens is the end of the contract. And it is also the end of an era. Kind of like Japan. Where every time an emperor dies, a new era is started. Except this with dragons. years of contracts burnt and reduced to ash. Mm. We, the people of Liyue, were indeed prosperous. But blinded by our prosperity, we forgot that time can be pitiless. The long, unending dream of our Archon walking among us. Mm. Just like it. Like, we had our Archon God walk among us. And like, oh dang it, our Archon God is not walking among us. Now what? Now that we have awoken from our dream, we must learn to say farewell. If only America could do the same. <laughs> and I'm thinking about like a political situation. You know what, that long story short, moving on. Will you stand with us as we reestablish our contracts? As we build a new age of prosperity. Uh, does anybody have a choice? So Says concludes the words of Her Eminence the Tin Chuen. Does Her Eminence the Yu Hung have anything to add? Huh? Is she looking this way? I don't know. Traveling. <laughs> yes, she is looking this way. Yikes! She really is looking our way! Obvious statement is obvious! Is that the traveler who they say defeated the ancient god? So what? young! The Liyue Qixing always repay their debts. And as you have heard, our eyes see far and our reach is long. Uh -huh. Name your price. You deserve that much. Zilch! Or whatever new character, or you. You as a new character. Or Ganyu. Whichever one. I have her. Huh? I have her. I gotta get one of them. Dot, dot, dot. Nothing. Because wow. that's what. Could you help me put up some missing person posters? Wow, my character can actually talk. Missing person poster. My character can actually talk. You, get over here. Also, that blue jay's not going anywhere. Hey, Zhongli! Look at this! Everyone in Lila is caught up in their emotions, thinking that they'll never see Rex Lapis again! Yeah, kind of like when a child moves out of their parents and has to decide, how do I define myself without my parents? And here you are looking all relaxed. Yeah, because he is that said parent who's come to terms with himself and leaving it, letting a child go out, it, going through empty, empty nest syndrome. <laughs> Why would I not feel more at ease? After laying down the burden I have borne for 3,700 years. I was a parent for that long. What do you expect? Right. If the two of you can spare the time, we should treat you to a meal at the Shinya kiosk. He got bored. He wants to quit his job. Ha! That sounds like big talk, Zhongli. Kinda might have believed you if you were treating us to some third-round knockout. 
but you'd have to pay out your nose just to stand inside Shinya's kiosk. Are you sure you can afford it? As much as I disagree with Paimon and many different things, there's another point she out she'll make. And I got You're right. Yes. I do. You've been like this more. way this entire time, but, but why would Morax like an answer? Why would Morax like Morax? That's not what I asked, but you asked that with help. As the Rex Lapis Morax, I can easily create more. But since I have chosen to walk this earth as the mortal Zhang Li, I should abide by the same rules that mortals do. So basically, you're like the United States Federal Reserve. You just keep printing off money. <laughs> when I was journeying with you, though I still had the gnosis in hand, I knew that I must soon retire from my role as an archon. So I had to rehearse a little for my new life. Oh, right. You're, you know you're going to be poor, so you're going to live a poor lifestyle. Oh, okay. No Well, we were only spending for Tui money. You don't have to say it like that. Yeah, you were spending their money. Right. In the city of commerce, we do not merely exchange money or goods. We also exchange knowledge, memories, and foresight, as well as physicians' roles and lives. Right. It almost sounds like a government position, but okay. The Archon Morak could never experience life as the true mortal Zhang Li could. No matter how many times he descended to be with his people. <laughs> I must thank you for that. I will treasure the memories that I made as Zhang Li. Mm -hmm. Traveling the streets of Liu with you. That was a fine journey traveling across China. That is true. There is no journey that does not end. No meetings without parties. Oh god, I'm, I'm just thinking about where I have to go after this. You know, Zuma. I think that we should make a move and continue our search for the seven. Fear that continuing your journey may be difficult. Uh... The nation that neighbors Mira by sea in Azuma is presently closed. The Electro Archon Wall. And just as the people of Liu had preferred to call me Rex Lapis, she too goes by another name among locals in Inazuma. Inazuma. Oh, God. And he even said the place is closed off. So, I'll explain that in a second. Um, Hyman thinks we've heard that one before. Uh, right? Right? Mm, I'm not sure. Uh, Hyman thinks we've heard that one really wonder how you knew about it. That is the case. And since Raiden is also the Shogun of Inazuma, people call her the Raiden Shogun. The Inazuma Shogun. It, like, basically, Inozuma is Japan. Japan land. Where it's taking place in a, a period the Shohoku. A few moments later. I'll explain. Since you're Rex Lapis, shouldn't you know something about what happened there? Just how did Inazuma become a closed nation? It's because of visions. Visions? When faced with circumstances beyond their control. Humans often bemoan their lack of power. But if a person shows true strength of will at a desperate and fateful moment in their life, the gods will look upon them with favor. Hmm. Interesting you say that. This is what visions are. Magical foci bestowed upon those who have been acknowledged by the gods. Mm. Uh-huh. That's how people in Tibet see it. But starting from last year, the Raiden Shogun began promulgating the Vision Hunt Decree. Yes, and it was an order to seize all visions within Inazuma's borders and to inlay them upon the hands of the statue of the omnipresent god. Okay, anyway. But why? Aren't visions blessings from the gods? I should think that in the Raiden Shogun's eyes, 
it is precisely because they are divine blessings that they should be under the sole dominion of divinity. Wow, that's harsh. The animal archon is the god of freedom, and the geo archon is the god of contracts. For her part, the Raiden Shogun is the god of eternity. It seems as though she has finally decided to eliminate any unstable elements that could pose a threat to her eternal realm. I really wonder what would cause her to do that. The fact that even I, the oldest of the seven, have now passed away will only strengthen her resolve to pursue eternity. What do you expect when you fake your own funeral? Knowing her, she must have again quoted that adage she is most fond of when proclaiming that decree to her people. Seven ideals for seven gods. And of these, eternity is nearest unto the heavenly principles. Uh, heavenly principles. All right then. Was there anything else you wish to know? Uh, the trial, what? <laughs> ah, that was a good one. Failing a divine trial. How they came up with that excuse, I will never know. Mm. That said, the reason why the Chi Sing were so eager to resolve the incident and stop pursuing the culprit was indeed because they received news in secret that Rex Lapis was not dead. So they did somehow know, even though I thought they didn't. I hinted as much to the Adepti as well. How did I accomplish that, you ask? Hmm. Have you ever heard of this particularly convenient Adepti art known as gifting dreams and visions? Uh, is it not, not called a lie? All right then. Was there anything else you wish to know? Child, who exactly is he? What does he do? Why is he here? What was his role? Why, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, about that. Before the Chiefing made their announcement, we listened to a lot of people talking on the way. Most of them put the blame for everything on child. These are indeed false accusations. But it remains undeniably true that Child did send people to the Jade Chamber to prevent the Adepti and the Chi Sing from defeating the ancient god. I've heard that Ningguang is busy milking that for all it's worth on the foreign relations front at the moment, browbeating the envoys of the Fatui. <laughs> Those poor Snezhnayan diplomats. If it were not for Child's exalted position as a harbinger, I'm certain that they would have shifted all the blame to him and called for his dismissal by... All right, then. Okay. Was there anything else you wished to... Anyway, Chi Sing. The time of the Adepti has long passed. If even the Liu Chi Sing don't want to face that truth, then what future is there for Liu? Uh, actually, set to move on. Kujing is absolutely right in saying this. Now... Though I did laud Ningguang's desire for power, believing this to be a good thing, and thought as a matter of course that she must have been behind the Chi Sing's plan to take governing power over Liu from the hands of the gods and the Dipti. Could the original person who brought up the idea of seizing power have been... All right then. Was there Mara. anything else you wish to know? Why do you make so much Mora? Why couldn't you just learn to spend your own Mora? That's right. How can we function in a society that is devoid of any currency? Do we go back to bartering? The Mora present now will not vanish. But the Golden House will indeed have to cease operations for a lengthy period of time. Since creating Mora requires the use of the Geo Archon's power. Uh, wow. No, it's... Oh, God. The existing Mora is not going to vanish. It's just going to be limited. So it's not going to be infinite. It's just going to be finite. Yes. But then again, this nothing is, is indeed infinite. indeed a major issue from a financial standpoint. Mm, the idea of not having infinite currency? Mm, maybe. <laughs> uh, well, I suppose we'll just leave such troublesome matters to the Leo Achieve. Did you at least set some private funds aside? Oh, a private fund. Hmm. 
This does seem like a good, logical, common sense idea. You didn't set it up for yourself, did you? <sighs> it's a shame. You didn't! Oh my god. I think you know what to do at this point, Patrick. I mean, even you can create infinite money, but you just choose not to. Mm. All right then. Was there Ow. anything else? Well then, I suppose you'll have to find a way to get inside this closed nation. Uh, how to breathe? Oh, journey. A new star approaches bronze. 